Should we try an experiment? Everybody up for an experiment? Yeah. All right. When I say go, we'll, ta we'll take 10 seconds, and I want you to stop thinking. Ready? Go. David Einhorn is the Wall Street guru of an investment philosophy called value investing. What he, do, he attributes his success to buying optimistically when everyone else is staying away from it, was acting pessimistically towards a product. He invests when it's low, and he has the positive thought that it's going to get better. If you take a room of CEOs or very successful people, you'll see oftentimes they have a natural optimism and a positive energy about them. I spoke to a cardiologist friend of mine who told me a fascinating experiment was that he had heard about from one of his friends. He said that they took a, a study of children who were diagnosed with cancer and a control of them, what, he did, what they did, was they had the kids play Pac-Man. And, you know, Pac-Man is the game where they have, like, that guy, and he's munching all the... It's from the 80s. And, he, and they said, they told the kids that pretend the little munchy things are your cancer. Those children who had that state of mind did exceedingly better in their results and in their progress than those who didn't have in mind. Everyone probably in this room has heard of the book The Secret or in the documentary The Secret. So we see that the idea, the law of attraction, how positive thoughts breed results is very much in vogue. The idea that positive thoughts, that positive thinking will bring good results um, and that negative results, is, uh, negative thoughts bring negative results is the, the core of cognitive psychotherapy, that you think good, if you think good about yourself, that you'll be empowered and you'll be able to change. So the question is, what does the Torah say? We see that secular society is already coming around, that they acknowledge speech plays a role in shaping creation, and that thoughts even can shape what takes place in reality. What does the Torah say? And the truth is, for us as Jews, we always have to look through the lens of the Torah. The Talmud, the Gemara in Nida, the end of chapter 3, says as follows. When the fetus is in the womb of its mother, two things happen to it. Number one, it sees from one end of the world to the other. It's shown the entire world. And secondly, it's taught the entire Torah. It says, next, when the fetus comes out after nine months, an angel slaps the child on the mouth, and it forgets all the Torah that it learned. So I have a question. The question is, the Talmud only mentions that it forgets the Torah that it learned. But how come it doesn't remember what it saw? This, it, sa it says that it sees from this end of the world from the other end of the world. How come I don't remember what the whole world looks like, and I, was, I saw it? And the answer is, because without Torah... You can't see anything. Through the lens of the Torah is how we gain clarity to reality. In Jewish meditation, it's taught that without meditating on godly concepts, without meditating on Torah ideas, that the subconscious of a person remains unrectified. A person can't stop thinking. Should we try an experiment? Everybody up for an experiment? Yeah. All right. When I say go, we'll, ta we'll take 10 seconds, and I want you to stop thinking. Ready? Go. All right, who's thinking? And, who, and who, who, who's not thinking, but thinking, I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking. <laughs> so the mind can't stop thinking. The question is, 
what are we thinking about? Our natural inclination is to think about the natural world at best and at worst to look at that natural world in a natural look which is negative, which will be drawn down to negativity. We always have to have positive thoughts. The truth is that any positive thoughts will work. If a person wants to really excel in life, any positive thoughts will work. But Torah ideas about optimism are especially effective. Like the Talmud, the Gemara, and the Vayda Zara says, Ein toiv ela Torah. Torah is the ultimate good. Therefore, if we think concepts of Torah, or if we understand the Torah's principle of positive thinking, that will be the greatest force in order to accomplish that. Many of us may be familiar with the story from the Torah about Joseph. Joseph is the favored son of his father, Jacob. He's given a very nice coat. And he's sent one day to go check on the rest of his brothers, see how they're doing. And we know the story. What happens is, you know, superficially they're jealous of him, and they end up throwing him in a pit. Now the Torah tells us something about this pit. It says that the pit was empty. There was no water in it. The pit was empty, there was no water in it. The Medrash says, isn't that a bit redundant? If it was empty, I know there's no water in it. It's empty. So the Medrash clarifies, it says, yes, it was empty of water, but it was filled with snakes and scorpions. In the Talmud, the Gemara in uh, Bavakama says that water is symbolic of the refreshing flow of Torah wisdom. The pit can be compared to the human mind. The pit is the vessel of the human mind. If the vessel, if the human mind is not filled with water, the only other option is that it's going to be filled with snakes and scorpions. If we don't have the positive perspective in our mind, if we don't have Torah ideas in our mind, a rectified subconscious, what's going to be filling it? Snakes and scorpions. With our own thoughts, we don't have to fight off negativity. Many people, I've spoken to many people, and they said, you know, I'm so negative. I'm a negative person. I can't, I don't know how to get rid of these negative thoughts. And the truth is, we don't have to get rid of the negative thoughts. We just have to increase in positive thoughts. If a person has a vat of poison, and this vat, you can't pick it up, you can't dump out the poison, but you want to fill it, just stick a hose in there and keep adding water until the poison gets out of there. Fill our minds with so much positivity and so much Torah that the negativity will just disappear. Engraving Torah concepts in our minds through contemplation and meditation we will only see things in the positive light with optimism and confidence. There's a classic story from the Talmud about Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva would travel oftentimes town to town, and he traveled with what you traveled with in those days. He traveled with a donkey to transport his things. He traveled with a rooster in order to wake him up, and he traveled with a candle in order to, that he can sit and study. So he's, he went on his way, he came to a village, and he starts knocking on doors for some hospitality. Knocks on one, ah, we're full. Knocks on the next, I'm sorry, sorry Charlie. Next one, next one, and he can't find any lodging for that night. So what does he do? He has a mantra that he says to himself, a way of thinking that he lived by. He says, Kol da'avid rachmana letav avid. Everything that God does, he does for good. That was his mantra. That's what he lived by. Everything that happens is for the best. So he goes out to the field and finds lodging in the field. What happens that night? First, a lion comes and devours his donkey. Great. Great. Next, the wind comes, blows out his candle. All right, now we can't learn. Now he's just sitting in the dark. And then a weasel comes and devours his rooster. Oh, this is really a great night. 
But Rabbi Akiva had a mantra. And Rabbi Akiva had a perspective that he lived by. Called the Avid Rahman Latav Avid. Everything that God does is for the best. Everything is good. It's all good. So he goes to sleep, wakes up the next morning, and finds out that the village that he had been knocking on had been ransacked by the Romans. People had been beaten, people had been murdered. And if he would have found lodging in that village, he would never have survived. Moreover, if his donkey would have heard the commotion, it would have let out some howls. If his rooster heard the commotion, he would let out some coos. And if they saw a light in the field, the Romans would have come and attacked him as well. Everything Hashem does is for the good. And he lived with this principle, and that was the effect that it had. One thing that's very interesting, and I'll throw it out there as sort of a Kabbalistic footnote. We know in Jewish tradition that there's a concept of gematrias. Gematria is a numeric equivalent that certain words or phrases that match numerically other words or phrases. For example, aleph would be one, base would be two. Certain things that match up numerically are related to, are related to each other. They have the same essence. The gematria, the numeric value of Rabbi Akiva's phrase, called to Avi Rahman, Latov Avid, everything God does is for the good, has the numeric value of 611. Do you know what else has the numeric value of 611? The word Torah. If a person engraves Torah in their mind, if a person looks at the world through the lens of the Torah and through the Torah perspective, will be able to not only be positive, but see positive results in the world.